Today is the first day of my new job as a teacher at the high school I once graduated from. Other than the fact at how damn early I had to get up, I was 100% ecstatic and ambitious towards what may happen on my first day back there. 5.30 came all too quickly. I was in and out of the shower, dressed and ready. Coffee in hand by 5.55. I hastily locked up my apartment and made my way to the car. I fumbled around a little in the darkness while trying to get into my car, but I eventually got it. I started to drive down my street. I had to take it slow due to ice, lots of ice, and a black figure began to appear in my field of vision. It was the shape of a man, in all black, walking slowly down the road. This struck me as odd. 6 a.m. and someone is walking? In this weather? It had to be at least 2 degrees outside. And this guy is walking. Everything moved in slow motion as I thought about what he might be doing here. Why would he be walking? Where would he be walking to? Then my mind began to be enveloped by my fear senses and I began thinking things that were completely irrational. Perhaps he's some sort of serial killer I thought maybe he might pull out a 45 and blow my head off as I drive past him my mind continued diving deeper into these paranoid delusions as I drew closer to the mystery man his form becoming clearer as I inched closer with my headlights I could make out more of his form now he was wearing a black work coat it appeared to be dirty and covered in snow he was wearing black pants and combat boots. The laces were not tied. A hood from presumably another jacket beneath the work coat hid his head from view. With a description like that, there were two possibilities in my mind. Homeless or crazy. Eventually realizing how insane I was being over a man walking down the road, I snapped myself back to reality and shook off my dreadful thinking. Listen to yourself. You're being ridiculous. I scolded myself. I couldn't 100% shake my uneasiness, though. However, I wasn't going to let a simple oddity like this drive me to insanity. I brushed off whatever trance I was in and continued driving towards him. But then, something happened that I never saw coming. The man stopped. He stopped walking. He stood there in my headlights, and as soon as I noticed he had stopped, I slammed on my brakes and halted as well. My heart began to race and my stomach did loops for reasons I didn't understand, but I do now. He started to turn towards me. He was going to look at me. As he slowly turned, my heart pumped faster. Then to my horror, I finally saw the face of this man. If you could even call it a man, his eyes were shrouded in a blackness that was darker than the night around us. His white pupils glowed in the center of those pits as he stared into my very being. His nose wasn't there. In its place was a crude sewing together of the flesh around it, pulling his skin tightly across his bony face. His lips were non-existent, revealing every single one of his jagged, chipped, decaying teeth. His gums were rotted and frostbitten, and he was as pale as the snow around him. We made eye contact, and as we did, my heart grew to a pace I didn't think possible. I was certain I was going to die here, but my survival instincts kicked in, and I put the pedal to the floor. I drove right past him, but when I got within feet of him, he vanished completely sending me into a head-on collision with a telephone pole. I was sent flying through the windshield and into the snow below. As soon as I hit the ground, my body began going numb. My sides had a pain, my chest had a pain, and I had a shooting pain down my left arm. I again thought I was going to die there. My vision began to fade, and as it did, I looked up to find the man towering over me, staring at me. Then, everything went black. I woke up in a hospital bed the next morning, 
Apparently the neighbors were awakened by the crash and found me just in time. When the police asked me what had happened, I gave them a description of the man. Of course, they thought it was some sort of hallucination. So here I am, sitting in this room. I'll be here for another week or so. I'm typing this on a laptop the hospital was so kind to allow me to use while I'm here. But I won't be here much longer. My friend came to visit me today, the friend I met that night. The friend who tried to show me the true world. He's here now. He's sitting next to me, telling me everything is going to be okay. He's my master now. I belong to him. He's watching me. He was always watching me from the day I was born until the day I die. And he's watching you right now.